everyone, welcome to Model Kit Stuff and today we're doing a first impressions video of um, Airfix's 172 scale uh, mesher spit ME262A-1A which is a 2017 tooling so um, a fairly recent kit. Box is the usual uh, red box affair which denotes it being a recent kit as a general rule. Um, we have the two um, paint mark um, options shown on the front. Um, the kit number is A03088. Um, you have the usual uh, information down the sides. Um, it's the same picture as the box art uh, on the other cut, on the other edges. And then as usual, if we tip this over, um, we have some history. Um, tells you what the two paint options are gives you the list of paints you need so you can go and get them in the store while you buy the kit um, it's a skill level two and would have come with one flying hour um, so the two options let me just read them for you are aircraft flown by um, Theodore Wassenberger in January 45 and a version from Bavaria in Germany, April, March 45, which is the one depicted here on the front with the little blue, blue and white checks. So, uh, as I'm guessing most people know, um, this is the first operational jet fighter um, to ever see service in the world. Um, it came into operation um, uh, mid-1944. Um, and in this configuration, uh, the Germans tended to nickname it the Swallow. Uh, I think because of its swept back wing, um, I would guess it has that sort of sort of look. Um, and, um, and this aircraft was responsible for at least um, 540 uh, other aircraft being shot down during the, its short lifespan in the war. And actually, this aircraft was in development before the war. Um, uh, but it just took uh, until '44 to get it operational and, and uh, move out the kinks and, and so on and so forth. Now, I don't know huge amounts about this aircraft. I'm sure there's lots and lots of people out there that know a lot more about it than me. What I can tell you is that the 26281A is the initial production run version. Um, and that I can also tell you that it had a huge influence on post-war um, fighter and general aircraft development. So let's have a look what we get. So uh, we have the uh, familiar uh, A4 um, stapled um, instruction booklet to look at first um, and the front page is primarily um, laid out with a little bit of pot history and the specifications and I'm just quickly read through this um, uh, and one of the things that it says in here that the dispatch are being very fast and heavily armed she did have quite a short range I'm guessing that's because of um, excessive fuel consumption um, it also gives you the um, diameters of the kit at the top which is not something I've mentioned before but it is usually there um, and it tells you that you've got um, a wingspan of 174 millimeters, um, a length of 148 millimeters, um, and two decal uh, and two decal uh, schemes included. Then it does you the little uh, best uh, for best results spiel that is the same on all um, Airfix kits. And then as we turn it over, um, we've got assembly instructions in multiple languages and the assembly key, which uh, never really changes. It's always the, pretty much the same for Airfix. Okay, so immediately we can see it's in the newer format with the um, red parts denoting what was last done. Um, and we start on the cockpit tub. Um, so we've got the um, tub there with the um, bulkhead going in. Then we've got the seat going in. I can already see we've got no seat harnesses, but I was sort of expecting that. Um, then we've got 
pedals and floor pan, uh, joystick. Um, we're building up the side walls with various um, control um, controls involved. Then we've got the uh, we've got two decals to build up the various dials and bits and pieces. And then there's a top goes on the tub, um, so you're having to put the pilot in quite early on. Then as we then we move into the um, wings. Uh, and building up uh, the structure that's going to support that tub. So um, we've got nine steps to start with. As we turn over, we then have uh, a further bulkhead um, to go into the two fuselage halves. So interestingly, the uh, cockpit is on the um, underside of the wings and then marries up into the already built up fuselage. Um, and this kit is telling you that you can mount it onto um, their newer stand. Now, this is really interesting. A lot of kits don't have this in. Some of the newer releases don't have this in at all. Um, now, you've not been able to get these stands for ages, but they do have the older styles of stand where you need a, a little slit to cut in rather than two holes. So um, the fact that that's dropped off recent kits makes me wonder if we're never going to see those ones again. Uh, and then in step 12, we're completing the um, nose section of the aircraft with a separate piece, which looks to me like it's probably been designed around the natural panel lines there so that's a good idea and then the two wing halves going on top and we can see the join is um, at the edge of the the flaps so again that join will be nicely hidden so that's really good um, and they're asking you to put five grams of weight into this no no section here um, so that bulkhead's going to stop things rattling around depending on uh, what your chosen method is of putting that weight in flip her over. So we're on step 13 now, we're building up the tail. Um, and then at step 15 we're starting to build up the engines. So you can see there's some parts going into the two engine nacelles and then we've got a, an, an end cap that needs uh, building up. So that should look relatively detailed. Uh, for the scale shouldn't be bad at all. Um, so it's showing you building up uh, one engine, then the other engine, uh, effectively. Um, and, and it looks like it's showing you um, painting instructions and orientation quite closely. Now, I'm flipping over again and this particular one has been mistapled, so it's not, it's not stapled on the centre line, and so I can't fold that over particularly well. Okay, step 24, we mount the engines um, underneath the um, wings. Then if you're doing gear up, you can just um, close the uh, gear areas up. If you're not, then we're putting in the doors and then building the gear up. That could be a little tricky in that tight space. We'll see. Um, then we've got the uh, wing gear going in. Um, looks like it's a solid wheel um, with, with hub already molded in. Um, and there's no brake lines or anything uh, visible on the gear. Now we have got a couple of extra parts that go on, so it does it does have a, a relatively decent amount of detail. I'm sure it wouldn't be too much trouble to put a little bit of thin wire on there or stretch through whatever your solution is. So that's basically building up the landing gear. Ah, right, okay. So this wheel we're looking at is the um, nose wheel, but actually we have weighted tyres and separate hubs for... Um, the the main landing gear wheels so so that's good that yeah because I was a bit disappointed when we saw them all molded together so uh, yeah that's 
that's a little better um, and then it's showing you what this should look like the angle of the um, uh, the doors against the the weighted tire to make sure that you've got everything mounted correctly and square as it should be so that's a nice touch um, then we have an item going in under the wing we have options of open or closed canopy and then it's showing you in detail uh, the canopy then you've got the radio uh, loop going in the top um, um, pit up tube so that's quite a nice little construction it's going right in on, on there but rather than it just being the hole that it pokes into it's actually part of the wheel so they have thought about that um, and that is it so um, 38 steps so it's not step heavy then on the last page we have all the common stencils um, so um, it's pointing out where everything needs to go it looks like there's quite a few uh, uh, stencils decals to go on this uh, and then it's pulled up the two engine nacelles separately because they have um, different decals on so inner side port engine in a side starboard engine um, uh, you've even got decals to go on the outer outer wheel frame of each wheel uh, the, the hub I should say so that is the instructions done um, the paint instructions are actually on a separate sheet So marking um, A, which is depicting uh, the aircraft operating in Bavaria, March to April of 45. So that's right at the start of operational service, really. Um, and in uh, her familiar sort of um, grey um, camouflage pattern. So you've got you've got some um, that sort of broken up pattern between the lighter and darker greys um, could be quite a challenge to paint that actually it's quite um, for, for younger modelers particularly um, that can be a little bit of a challenge but best way is to make a mask or something for that okay um, yeah okay so there's your painting scheme we've got that lovely um, decal going on the white and blue check decal um, and the national markings um, and there is no swastika on the tail. I don't know whether that's correct or not, but um, maybe. Um, and then as we flip it over, we've got this um, paint scheme B, which has that um, splinter pattern, green and grey camouflage, um, and the same uh, grey underneath. And again, uh, quite a challenging um, paint scheme in places. So as we look at the decal sheet, um, the usual format for um, airfix, um, this area under, uh, above this line is all the common decals. You can see how many they are, there's lots and lots of them. Um, then we've got the Scheme A and the Scheme B ones. Um, uh, slight, slightly more decals on the Scheme A but there's not much in it. Um, yeah, so both of those look nice. I think I prefer Scheme A personally, um, but yeah, um, decals are nice and thin. They will be cartographed. It doesn't doesn't say so, but they will be. Um, you can just tell uh, they're lovely. Um, so no excessive carrier film. Um, Airfix decals are amongst the very best you can get. So this is frame A and it's the first of three grey plastic sprues in the box all contained in one bag with the clear parts separate which is Airfix's standard approach for smaller kits. Um, and on here we've got the engine nacelles, the underside of the wings, 
the pilot and uh, we've got the weighted tyres there, um, some engine compa uh, components, the seats. So as I look at these, um, I, I think the panel lines are probably slightly oversized, um, but if you're painting these, brush painting these, um, they, they won't be too bad. Um, because once you're filled with paint, they'll look a little bit more realistic. If you're airbrushing it, then they're slightly oversized. Um, you've got quite a lot of um, interior detail being put into this moulding here. It's quite a complex little moulding, actually. Um, but you've got all the sort of the uh, framing um, depicted in there. Um, the pilot is not the best. Um, is quite soft moulded and as a result his features are a little bit um, sort of blended all together so um, airfix, airfix pilots aren't, aren't brilliant usually um, then you've got, but well, at least they're putting them in, I mean some people don't bother um, the landing gear is really nice, lots of detail, it's sharp and crisp um, will look really good under paint that actually Engine detail is basic, but gets you where you need to be. Um, the tread on the tyre is probably a little, little light. But under a wash, will come out. But you've got a seam right, quite a heavy seam down the middle, and you, your um, sprue gates are connecting there. So uh, quite a bit of clean up on that. Although one of them is underneath the weighted, so if it's parked, you're only really going to see one. Um, the front wheel is also weighted um, and when they've done separate hubs for the main wheels why didn't they do separate hubs for the front wheel I, I don't get that um, engine nacelles um, there's no rivet detail or anything just the panel lines um, pretty basic on the inside um, the seat pretty basic um, yeah, it's all right. It's it's not uh, it's not spectacular, but it's okay. Rain B. Uh, we've got the uh, tail, um, the wing upper sections, um, some of the ordnance there. Um, that is um, if your landing gear is up for the nose, and that is um, part of the rib structure for um, mounting the wings. So again, the panel line's a little heavy, but they're all there. No rivet detail as such. Um, whether that's correct or not, I don't know. Panel lines on the tail actually are a bit light. They're almost not quite there. Um, and they are engraved, it's a single piece tail, so they're in, um, engraved on both sides. They look alright actually. And then frame C has the two fuse large halves, a um, couple of bulkheads and the um, cockpit tub. Uh, and when you look at these, there is not much in the way of detail in them. I know that we've got some extra parts going in and it might look suitably busy when built up. And I'm not sure how much of this will be visible. Um, yeah. Um, you've got some detail on the inside surfaces there, but as the tub mounts in there, how much of that you'll see, I, I, I don't know. Um, again, the panel lines don't appear too bad actually on the fuselage, not quite as bad as the, the wings in terms of depth. Um, but because of the shape of the aircraft, the panel line sort of disappears as you get to the top. So um, certainly on the top of the aircraft, once you've joined, joined the two halves and uh, what have you, you will be put having to scribe panel lines back in, but that, that's almost an expectation. When you, when you construct the fuselage in this way. Um, I can't see any flash 
or any sink or any imperfections on any of these parts. Um, and there is a little bit of raised rivet detail here, just on the bottom wing edge. And I can just about feel it here. Feels like it's not quite moulded properly, not, not quite pushed into the, the mould somehow, the plastic. You've got quite raised um, rivets here and I can feel them rather than see them, so I think they'll just disappear. So, okay. Let's have a look at the clear clear parts are broken, as in the uh, canopy, opening part of the canopy has um, snapped off. Uh, and when I look at its location point, it's not really a surprise, I guess. Um, it's it would would have been joined like that, so um, the weight of the other sprues on it has just snapped it at some point. Um, so let's have a look at this. Um, it's not. It's got a lot of distortion. Is my first comment. Quite a bit of distortion, and it's not particularly clear. Um, it has a slight bumpy texture to it, which means it's not very clear at all actually. Um, I think that's on the outside now. If you dip it in um, Airfix Clear then um, that will improve it but I don't think that's I don't think that's an amazing um, piece of clear plastic to be honest. If I look at the other ones um, the, the, the windshields um, uh, molded into what will be a section of the fuselage so nice and easy to paint so I like that um, but again not particularly clear um, although distortion is much better on those with it not having a curve that's easier um, distortion on the rear glass panel however um, there is some there it's not as bad as the, the, the main canopy um, and actually these look a bit clearer as well um, but I've seen better, um, I've certainly seen better from Airfix. So there we have it, what is my first impressions? Uh, well, it doesn't blow your socks off. Um, it's okay, is where I'm at. Um, when you look at Airfix kits over the last five years, um, you can see um, uh, a journey that Airfix are going on. Um, and they clearly intend to be amongst the best kits. They may, maybe they're trying to be the best kits, and they're not there yet. But you can see in a very short time they've travelled a very long way. If you compare that to what they've done with the recent um, de Havilland Mosquito that we reviewed um, not so long ago, then you can see how much better that's come. The, the plastic's harder. Uh, there's a greater level of detail. The construction um, is thought about in, in more depth. The clear parts are, 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 are much better and, and there's no imperfections. The panel lines are better. Um, so there's lots of things you could say is not quite right with this. Having said that, um, if you're um, a, a young modeler or, a, a, or you're, you know, um, you just want to, to slap a model together, actually, this won't look too bad at all. Um, what you've got to remember is, and you can see that from this artwork here, um, that there's not a lot of um, complex parts to this. The, the engine, there is not much to see. The wings are fairly smooth. Uh, I think there is de definitely detail missing. Um, there would have been rivet detail around the, the cannon openings, for example. Um, th there's, there's lots of things there that you could say just need a tweak. Um, but you're going to build up something that, that looks relatively good. I think the um, two paint schemes that they've chosen are interesting. I know that they've re-released this kit um, subsequently in 18 and 19 with different, different parts. So... Um, probably different ordnance because she is a sort of an interceptor bomber at this model. Um, so, yeah, it's not a bad kit by any stretch of the imagination. Um, 
but there's lots and lots of kits of the uh, 262 out there uh, and if you're wanting something that's more accurate and more detailed then you probably want to to shop around but at this scale uh, this does the job so yeah not not too shabby uh, a little bit of, of a way to go okay hope that was informative and helpful if you're thinking about buying into this kit um, take care everyone and we will see you soon uh -huh.